oh hey guys let's make a snowflake or continue to make a snowflake as we began to learn how in the previous tutorial so we learned a little bit about aligning symbols in the previous tutorial and if you missed that one i highly recommend you watch it link in the description the key to this whole process is to make it simple to draw a snowflake um, just by doing one arm of the snowflake and then it'll duplicate the image all the way around. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that. So your first step is going to be to create a symbol that's identically the same size as your stage. And this is important because you need the registration point of the symbol to be in the center of the stage. And you'll know what I mean if you watch that previous tutorial. So I've got this box. It's about the right size. I'll double click on it. I'll hit F8. Registration point in the center. Wait, I'm not going to hit F8 yet. Don't hit it. Don't hit F8 yet. Um, lock the width and height values together. This needs to be not the broken chain link, but the snap together when you have this guy selected. And I'm going to make that 512. And then the other one turns to 512 as well because they're locked. All right, and now let's see, I can go ahead and align that guy to the middle of my stage. If this is not checked, it won't snap it to the middle of the stage. And I'll align it middle to the vertical. So now, if I hide and show it, you can see that that is lined up with the stage. Now you may be wondering, but Jason, this white line here is extending beyond the stage. If you zoom in here, I'll show you what I mean. So this is the white border by hide and show. It's extending beyond the stage, right? That's because this line, if you'll recall from the previous tutorial, is actually tracked as information that is just a uh, paper thin. It's like, I'm like trying to motion to this, but I should use my mouse. It's like super razor paper thin, right? The line width is determined over here in the properties. I can just simply scale that down or scale it way up, right? Make it as wide or as thin as I want. Because you know, you can kind of see a little better what's happening. Make it a big line. I can make it a little skinny line. The point is, the actual width of the line does not factor into the size that I'm aligning to. And that's going to come in handy later. We're going to realize that later. Let's set that back to four. Okay, so select your whole box that's exactly the same size as your stage, whatever that size is. I recommend using a square. You don't have to, but just make it easier on yourself and do a perfect square. And then hit F8. Now this is where the registration point comes in handy. You remember, you can do the middle or any of these dots, right? We want to do the middle for this guy. So we got this symbol right here. You can see him in our library. He's a nice pretty box. If I double click into him, I see that I'm inside of symbol one. And my first order of business, well, first off, when you come in, you'll notice that everything is selected. You want to deselect everything by clicking off of it. Then you want to select just the blue and hit delete. It's important that you leave this white outline intact. It's really not showing up very well. So I'm going to make the outline blue so you can see it it's a little better. All right, then lock that layer. Never to touch it again. All right, next step. We need an arm of our snowflake. So what you want to do is select the line tool right here. And you want to create a line. But not just any line. You want a line that is perfectly vertical. Here's a little trick. When you're dragging, clicking and dragging the line tool, if you hold shift, you'll notice that it snaps. Snap, 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 snap. To straight down, 45 degree angle, straight over, etc., etc. So that's perfect, because then we can create a perfectly vertical line. I'm going to select this doohickey here, and I'm going to hit F8. But this time, there's a catch. I'm going to set the registration point to the bottom of that little dude, and I'm going to say OK. So you'll notice that the registration point is down here at the bottom, but the rotation handle is still in the middle. I can fix that by hitting Q and double-clicking on that little handle there. And now you see the little round balls down here on the registration point, which means if I rotate this and the rotate handle is kind of weird on a perfectly straight line. So I apologize. 
uh, you kind of have to mouse around until you get to just the right point. You see all these other icons that are appearing? It's like rotate, scale, all that. Yeah. Anyway, I get to the rotate one and I click and drag and you'll see I have an arm that rotates like so. Oh yeah. All right. Now if I just simply have this guy selected and then I hit align to center and align to center, it's not what I want, right? I want the arm to branch off in the middle. So I have to say align bottom edge. And this is why I wanted to work inside of a symbol that has a registration point here and not up here. Is because I want to be able to center it this way. Fancy, right? There's other ways to get it to align just perfect. This isn't the only way, but it's a pretty good way. Now, snowflakes are all unique. And you could argue that snowflakes come with multiple numbers of branches. And honestly, this could work for anything like a gear or something like that. Um, I've used this technique for a variety of things. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to do a six-sided snowflake. So there are 360 degrees in a circle. If you divide 360 by six arms, you will get 60. So I simply click on this guy, I copy him with Control C, and then I paste him in place with Control Shift V, and if you did it right, it should look identical because Control Shift V pastes the copied symbol in place. It's very important that you don't click on anything. You just simply come over here to your properties, hit transform, and rotate that guy 60 degrees. There we go. So now we have the original one copied and the next one here. So now I got this guy selected. Control C, Control Shift V. 60 plus 60 is 120. Control C, Control Shift V. 120 plus 60 is 180. Control C, Control Shift V. 180, you're probably wondering now, but Jason, why don't you just flip them horizontal right now? There's a reason, but I'm not going to tell you. Just kidding. I'll try to tell you as I try to do math in my head at the same time. The reason being for not flipping these is, let's say, for instance, I paint like, hold on, I'll just, I'll just show you. I'll show you why I didn't flip them. If I go inside of this guy and I paint a circle right here, see what happens. It puts that circle inside all of the identical siblings, right? So this guy's on the right side, right? So it's rotated, still on the right, still on the right, still on the right, still on the right. If I wanted to do an object that, I don't know, was like asymmetrical for some reason on each of these blades, and if I flip this across that axis, bonk, like that, the dot would be below. And I don't want it to be below. I want it to be symmetrical. Okay? I think you get the idea. I can delete that. Okay, so now I'm inside of this symbol, and I'm going to pick a color that is better for the purposes of this tutorial. Blue, let's do dark. Yeah, like, well, I don't know. I'll pick a dark color, and that's weird. It doesn't show up as good. Green, I guess. Oh. Oh. I like pink. No, that doesn't work. Once you've decided on your color, which I'm going to go with blue. Hope it doesn't hurt your eyes too much. Sorry about that. Um, you have some things to start considering. So everything I paint in here, it gets duplicated around, and you can see how noisy it gets, right? So if I just do like this, it's like, no, they're all squiggly, whatever. The first thing you probably want to do is you want to preserve this line. So um, I just like creating a, a copy a copy of it. So I'll copy it and then create a new layer and do Control Shift B. Oh, apparently I didn't copy it. Select, Control C, Control Shift B. Okay. So I've got this line here and I've got it twice. Oops, <laughs> see that? You're starting to see how this is going to work. Come on, get on with it. I'm trying. Sorry. All right, so I'm going to like select this down here, and I'm going to delete that. So I delete the tip of that. And what I'm doing, basically, is I'm selecting both lines at the same time and deleting both of them. So this is good. This is good. You can hide that guy. I'll even turn him into a guide layer just to be 
safe that he won't do anything. Now, what I want is to be able to just paint my snowflake freehand. And the reason why is because, I mean, you could go all geomet geometrical on this, right? Like, I could like draw this, and this, and it's like, oh, it's a snowflake, uh -huh. um, you know, and ta-da, snowflake. But that's like the boring way to make snowflakes, guys. It's not creative. It's not like Gotta got have fun with this. So I'll show you how to have fun with this. All right, so first off, I was doing it wrong just now when I was drawing stuff over here. I mean, I get that it will duplicate all the way around, but it's messy to work on the line that you're not inside of. Like, I only want to draw all my stuff around this line, right? Because of reasons, mostly because of reasons. We'll get to that later. Um, so I'll tell you when you're older. Okay, here we go. Uh, we'll do this. And then we come down here. Now the thing about a snowflake is you can mess up quite a bit because no two snowflakes look alike. So it's like creatures, you know, like cre creatures are really unique and wacky how they look. And like you can add on extra eyeballs here and there and no one's going to care because I don't know, maybe it's an eyeball creature, and that's totally fine. Well, snowflakes are similar. I'll just draw it halfway there, and halfway there. So, it's like, bada bing, we got a snowflake, and we did it the creative way, which is really, when you think about it, the only right way to do something. I'm just kidding, there's other ways. So now I'm like, sweet, my lines are all connected, I'm going to paint fill it. Well, you can't paint fill it, because guess what? I just turn on outline mode on this. This guy needs to be actually filled in. So what you want to do is I could draw a line like this. And this is where your the brain starts getting uh, confuddled. I gotta close in all these lines. There we go. So yeah, it's kind of like re repeat city, right? It just repeats, repeats, repeats. Um, if I bring this into the center, like so then it's perfect. Ooh, I, I kind of like the little dilly dads in there. Look at that. It's like, that's a happy accident right there. That's what that is. That's what happens when you do things the, the right way, I mean the artistic way. Believe it. All right, here we go. I don't know why I just got angry just now. Because I'm going to do a rounded doily snowflake because I'm feeling festive in, in a doily sort of way. All right. I'm not sure why not. This is, this is looking hot, guys. It's pretty hot for a cool snowflake, if I say so myself. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Jason, there's got to be an easier way to get these two sides to look identical. Well, I'm so glad that you brought that up. But even when I'm roughing stuff out, man, I don't have time to be thinking about that. You know, I just want to be freehand, right? Like, if the two sides aren't identical, it's like, so what, man? The important thing is, I'm making, I'm making art. You guys, you guys know. You guys know how it is making art. Can't be waiting for stuff like that. That just looks like hearts. Mm -hmm. Look like some. Well, Valentine's Day is coming up too. Why not? All right. Hmm. Maybe I'll do a tutorial about hearts. That sounds lovely. I like these holiday-themed ventures. So form volley, cheesy. That's how you do it. Okay, so if I don't want this blue line to show up anymore, all I gotta do is right click on that guy and make it a guide layer. And then when I uh, move layers, it'll disappear. Notice that it stayed here because I have it, I don't have it hidden inside of the symbol, but I can hide that. It's gone. All right, guys. That's that's a snowflake. That is. And I can, again, turn on outline mode to show just 
the snowflake that I'm doing. So I got this guy roughed in. In the next tutorial, we're going to take some time and we're going to polish this guy. I'm going to show you how to minimize the work by, you know, mirroring it side to side, etc. I'm looking at this and I don't like it. It's like painful to my eyes. I can't, I can't end on this note, you guys. Sorry. I got to do something to get this looking right. Well, that's better. Goodness sakes. To Betsy. That's kind of cool. It's like a gothic rose petal snowflake. Yeah. That's the fun thing about this. It's like when you do those paper cutouts, but it's a lot more forgiving because you can like go back and make edits. Make it snowflake however you want, man. No one's going to stop you. I used to know the word for this thing. It's like a... It's like the Weeble of Scouts thing. The diamond shaped thing? I don't know. I forget what it's called. Hmm. Is that what I want? No, that's not what I want. I want it to do this, maybe. I'm just trying stuff. I don't know, I'm just finding the shapes. I need to watch my tutorial on making good shapes because I have no idea what's happening right now. Where am I? What's my name? Hmm. Yep, that was it. Got it. Nailed it. That's like that's like a cool looking snowflake. You know what I'm saying? Get some hierarchy there. I don't want these smaller shapes to be competing with that bigger shape up there. I gotta remember their place. You know what I'm saying? All them little shapes cropping up on that big shape. Yeah, and let's do this. Fancy, fancy pants. I like it. Now we got a snowflake we can write home to mom about. One last thing. These little dilly dops. They just, they just look so cool. Dilly Dop. Yeah. I don't know. This is like overkill at this point. I don't know where you would actually use a snowflake with this much detail. Maybe it's like a decal or something. I just like the little Dilly Dops. I might get rid of them in the next tutorial, which reminds me. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, where we learned how to use the align tool inside of a symbol. Remember, we're down inside of a symbol inside of a symbol, right? And there's all of the symbols together. So, yeah, that's making a rough snowflake. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned something.